And welcome my nerd musician friend, my name is Gustavo Silveira and today I'm going to teach you how you can make your own enclosures using the software Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is a 3D modeling software great for designing products where I make my own enclosures. So you might be thinking that, oh, 3D modeling is hard, but I'm going to make your life really easy. You're just going to take my own project and adapt to make your own, just tweaking some numbers and working a little bit. Okay, so let's get started. So what is the Fusion 360? Fusion 360 is a CAD software, which is great for designing products. So before Fusion 360, I was using Inkscape. I still use it, but I was using to make 2D drawings of my enclosures for my MIDI controllers. But why not use a CAD software for doing 3D models, right? So you can do a 3D model for a 3D printer, which you can go crazy in the design, or if you don't have a 3D printer and you have access to a laser cutter, you can actually do designs that can also be exported to a laser cutter in the end, okay? So that's the case that we're gonna do in this tutorial, right? So I'm going to teach you how you can modify my design to using your own personal project in your DIY MIDI controller or anything that needs an enclosure for an electronics project, okay? So first of all, let's download Fusion 360. I left the link in the description of the video. It's free for students, educators, or if you're not making money with that, you can just come here, create your account, register and download. I'm not going to show you step by step. You can do that. So after you install the software, go there, take a look, and you need to download the file of my enclosure, okay? So it's Fusion 360, it's uh, cloud-based, so your files can actually stay in the cloud and you can share them. So I just shared mine, and you can come here and download. You can have some fun here, uh, just taking a look on the different views of the enclosure. You have different parts, you can just see the top, you can just see the bottom. But let's not waste that much time here. You download, choose Fusion 360 Archive. It's gonna ask you for, for you to type your email and then they're gonna send this to your email. Then what you, you do is that you come to Fusion 360. This is gonna be blank, right? You come here and you can actually create a new folder. You have your projects here. You can create a new project. I already have my laser cut enclosure project. And inside this project, you can have different designs. Okay. So I already have one, which is the flipper DJ, which is this controller, which is based in this enclosure basic. So the way you add to your project is upload and select files. You go there, you find your enclosure basic and you upload, right? It's gonna take some, uh, not minutes, a couple seconds, and then it's gonna be here. And then you just double click it and you open your uh, enclosure basic project, okay? Then you can just look your uh, design here. So basics of navigating on Fusion 360. If you press scroll in your uh, mouse scroll wheel, you can move your camera. If you press shift and move the scroll, you can uh, rotate your view too, right? And clicking, you can drag. I'm not going to drag things here because they are fixed, but you can actually drag components just clicking them and dragging. So scrolling your scroll here, you can zoom in and zoom out. So basically is that, you just zoom in, zoom out, press uh, the scroll to drag or to move your camera and shift to rotate. Here you can see this layout grid or not. Here you can, uh, your visual style, you can do like shaded, which looks nice, but it's kind of, kind of confusing. You can see 
exactly uh, all the edges so I like to use shaded with visible edges only but it's up to you you can select orthographic view like the top you can move you can see the front you can see that's inverted here on mine like the back is the front actually okay and that's the basics of navigating on fusion now we are going to take a look here on the left so keep in mind that this is not a fusion 360 tutorial i'm trying to do the best uh, as possible for you to use this without being an expert on fusion i'm not an expert at all i learned this a couple weeks ago and but it has a learning curve it's not an easy program to learn so it takes some time and i'm gonna leave uh, some links for tutorials that i think that they are really useful so my idea here is how you can modify my project without knowing a lot about fusion and of course with time you're gonna learn and you will be able to do more things with it okay so next step we're gonna take a look here in the browser here is where all your things your components and bodies sketches origins joints and all those things that you might not know now what they are are located so basically the files of your design so let's talk about those here after constructions okay basically here each of those are components but think of them as groups okay they can just uh, hold one thing one body but they can hold like different components inside components like different groups so I have the main things here in my design I'm gonna deselect all of them so we can take a look to each of them at time so let's take a look on the top now so the top probably is the most important part is where you're gonna mount your components I have mounting holes for 16 30 millimeter arcade buttons and for rotary potentiometers and slide potentiometers I just don't have the actually I don't have the the model for the slide potentiometer but they are 45 millimeters by 9.5 I guess and 30 millimeter of travel right and one thing that's common that's gonna be common in your design are the those mounting holes here and those fitting points so that's how you actually mount with the sides right they're gonna fit in this thing here so without the top you can see that they have on top and on the bottom so with my sides I have a hole for the USB cable and I have the bottom let's take off the top so we can see the bottom so one uh, so the bottom has one important thing which is the mounting holes for the PCB so I'm using in my uh, MIDI controllers usually this kind of uh, solderable PCB so let's let me take this off and the arcade buttons so for example you have this uh, Adafruit Perma Proto board where you can solder it's just like a breadboard but you can solder on that and you can find like the Adafruit Perma board or the Spark Fun one and you have the Geek Fun you have other brands and I have for these two models the Spark Fun which is gonna fit in those mounting holes and for the Adafruit and you can use both of them and both we will align with the front panel right because you're gonna mount your Arduino a little bit to the left like this I have the Arduino here the Arduino is not in the right um, height because it didn't find the spacers I mean the the headers but the height is that so 
let's hide the components and let's see with everything here again so that's how you see how you you can also uh, click and isolate it's like solo like a solo button and you can unisolate right so you get to a point that okay now how can I change this design to fit my my own things like my own components if I have like less buttons or more buttons right or if I have a different height or a different width in my material for example here is three millimeters width but what if you have a five millimeters right how can you change things here without needing to change everything so in this way Fusion 360 is really powerful because it has a way of doing parametric design which basically means that you can change things that you've done in the past and all the design all the future actions that you made are gonna adapt to what you've just changed so if my first thing was adjusting the width, the width of my uh, of my plates here of my sheets if I change now everything gets adapted because when I uh, design my when I designed my own uh, this enclosure I told the software that one thing is related to the other is not like absolute okay so I have something that's like variables that are just containers that are containing information about this enclosure so this enclosure has several different informations like uh, the distance between here and here between here and here the height and the width of the material that I can just go there and change and everything will adapt without you suffering redesigning the whole thing which might happen in other uh, 3d CAD or 3d uh, softwares okay so first of all this is the basic thing that you're gonna get which is the flipper DJ but you don't have 16 buttons or whatever you wanna start from the beginning so what we're gonna do first is selecting the top which is the thing that we want to change and here if you click it it's a little bit like it's the solo button the other the other components don't go away but they are now transparent which means that this is active and the other ones are inactive and if you click here you can see all of them so you might have noticed that here changed when I changed from here to here so this is the timeline so every action that you do on Fusion 360 gets recorded in this timeline so that's how you can come back and change one feature one action and all the other things will adapt so first thing you can just come here and find the place in the timeline right but it's huge there are like so many actions so the easiest way is clicking here so you know which component is that and then you active component and now you see just the timeline of this right I'm also going to isolate because I don't want to see anything else whatever okay so each of those are one action that I took in my uh, top layer or in my top part of my enclosure so if I put the mouse here you can see that everything gets uh, light it means that this was the first action where I extruded my drawing because first I just had one sketch of a square and then I made this a 3d thing with three millimeters width right so this was the first thing then when I click here you can see that later I extruded the holes 
meaning that if you extrude it positive, you're, you're gonna create a body or like you're gonna create mass. Or if you extrude something inside another object, you're gonna create a hole. So I made a sketch with this square here, rectangle, and then I extruded in a negative way, downwards, making the holes here in this uh, sheet. And then you can see that I have the mounting holes in the corners. Those are fillets where I made the corners uh, round. Here are the mounting holes for the mixer, potentiometers. And here are the holes for the arcade buttons. And here, this mounting hole, uh, which you might use or not. So let's say that I don't want to use those uh, potentiometers. So let's find where they are. You can right click. And here you, you have the suppress features. Click it. It's going to take uh, a little bit because it needs to think about the whole design, right? So the nice thing is that you didn't delete anything. It's still there if you want to use it later. But now you can actually do another thing if you want. So let's say that I also want to get rid of the arcade buttons and this mounting hole. I can just select both and suppress features. This way I'm going to just have my plain uh, sheet of aluminum or wood or acrylic and then I can design another thing on top of that. So let's take a look now how our whole enclosure is looking. Let's take a look in the whole thing. So let's say that your project is smaller or bigger than that. How can you change the size of this and the width of the material? So Fusion has this system that you can use variables for different values. So what is a variable? Variable is just a container that contains something inside that can be used in different times. You can use the same variable. So for example, in the past, you used the variable size x. And in the end, you use the same variable size x. So if your variable size x is store 7, it's going to be 7 in the beginning, and it's going to be 7 in the end. If you change the number that is inside the variable size x to 15, in the past, size x is going to change to 15 too, because it's just containing the number that you store on that, okay? So the way that you do that is you can here you can come here to modify, like change parameters. And you can add variables here, clicking in the plus sign. So you create a variable, and what is the name of the variable? Like x, which is from, uh, from here to here, y, which is from here to here, z, which is the height, and w, which is the width. So my x is from the inside, right? So it's the from here to here, and y is from here to here. So I'm not counting the outside of the, the enclosure. So the measurements here are just for the things that are going to be inside, right? So why I have this crazy formula here? You can also put formulas here inside your uh, variables. So for example, I was uh, coming from a 2D design, which is uh, what I which I made on uh, Inkscape. Okay, so the measurement that I had from Inkscape was from the edge to the other edge. But here on Fusion, I put my variables being from here to here. So for me to have the exact value from here to here, using the measure that I have from here to here, is basically this measure minus this here. So it's the outside measure minus this. So this is width and this is width. So it's the outside minus width 
times 2. If it gets complicated, just watch this video again. But I can just put here whatever I want that's going to be the measure from inside. So, for example, I can put 200 and I can, I just pressed tab. It takes a while because it's a lot of computing and put 200 here too. Never mind here. So now I have a square and all the things are still on how it was supposed to be. So what if you want to change the height? I have the Z here, which is the height. So let's put 25. So for example, I have this hole here. The way I did uh, that I drew this hole is that it's relative to here and to here. So if I change the size, the height, this thing is gonna ha is gonna have always the same distance from here to here. So if I make this too short, I'm going to cut this thing here. So pay attention on that because this needs to be here because with the, the breadboard and with the headers, the Arduino is going to be always in this height. So what if you have a different uh, width, like if you're using five millimeters acrylic? So you can just come here too. And now you have this thicker material, all right? So right now you changed uh, all the measures of my enclosure that you can print like that and make the holes later, or you can actually add your own things here, right? So after you chose your um, the size of your enclosure, or you can actually change the size later using those variables, you have a way of now designing your own uh, mounting holes here in any other thing. So that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. So see you soon.